Now, Anthony Albanese has issued his strongest comments yet on the pro-Palestinian wave hitting Australia in a new Sky News documentary, Never Again, The Fight Against Anti-Semitism. It's presented by Josh Frydenberg. And Josh asked the Prime Minister whether the popular pro-Palestinian chant from the river to the sea is an extremely violent statement to which the Prime Minister immediately agreed it is. Daniel, that's good to hear. But does the PM need to have a word with his own cabinet members? Because some of them seem to be confused. Well, look, the, the government is in a moral abyss. Um, you know, better late than never. Uh, but look, there's a clear issue here where there are uh, uh, significant sections of Labor voters, especially in Western Sydney, uh, who uh, have views that are at odds with apparently the leader of the party and mainstream Australians. And they are exerting significant electoral pressure. You have up to a third of voters in certain Labor seats are uh, Islamic. Uh, and this is uh, causing the Labor Party to um, take positions that are at odds with the mainstream of our society. So, um, yes, it's good that the Prime Minister has said this, but this is also just bleedingly obvious. Uh, it's amazing to me that it's taken him this long to actually recognise that basic fact. And we've got more disturbing footage from Melbourne showing anti-Israel protesters, including children, blocking another intersection in the CBD, this one Lonsdale and Swanston Streets, and the children are leading the chants about Zionists. So we've got two issues there, the, the, the use of children, and we're seeing that more and more. Children who surely can't understand what they're saying and what they're being encouraged to push. And then the, the, the mayhem in Melbourne with these protests blocking CBD streets on a regular basis. It seems to just be accepted now. Yeah, look, I agree with you about the children. I don't blame them. Um, they don't know any better. Uh, the fault lies with the parents uh, and the education institutions that are um, not educating them in an appropriate or balanced way. And on the protesters, look, people are sick of it. Yes, you have a right to protest, make your point, but you do not have a right to disrupt people's lives day after day, week after week. Um, and I think it's time that local police start cleaning up these protests uh, so that people can just get on with their lives. Now, let's have a look at the universities. Uh, Rebel news journalist Avi Yemeni was told by security at the University of Melbourne that he was spreading hate and inciting discourse uh, for questioning the pro-Palestinian narrative. Let's have a look at that. Come onto campus and you, disturb, you stir hatred. You stir discourse. I know who you are. You suddenly you care about, about hatred on campus, yep. but you've got a camp there full no, of terrorists, that. Hamasniks, and that doesn't that. bother you. But I'm me, this that. little half your height Jew, you think I'm stirring hatred. I'm a threat to your campus. Why don't you go into the, into the camp there full of anti-Semites, people that want all this that. crowd annihilated? No. Why don't you try, try get your security to kick them out instead of me? I'm not talking to you. Do you want to tell us why you're here? Can you tell us why you're still wearing a mask? Is that for COVID or to like protect your identity? Oh, oh well, that's that's not nice. We can't be grabbing microphones like that. Uh, what do you make of that? It, 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 it's interesting to hear that rationale from the administrator, security, whoever that was, that uh, anyone challenging the protesters is spreading hate and... Uh, causing incitement of some sort. Yeah, well, he said, uh, I think, stirring discourse. <laughs> sort of a Freudian slip. I mean, yeah. you're on a university camp, we can't have discourse on a campus. So I think he's really let the mask slip there. Look, I mean, this is a clear, as you say, double standard. Um, when you have these pro-Palestinian, which is really pro-Hamas uh, sympathisers who are protesting, they get the red carpet treatment. They say, oh, it's free speech. We believe in free speech. As soon as anyone else goes on a campus, whether it's Arby or anybody else that has a different perspective, they say, you're the one that's instigating hate. We've seen this with um, when conservatives want to host an event mm. and, and you have left-wing protesters that are trying to shut down the event, then police say the conservatives are the fault for hosting the event. So it's yeah. the victim-blaming problem. We see this throughout our society. It's very dangerous.
Absolutely. Now, we've got to have a look at Q&A. We don't do that often in this program for good reason, but this was a breath of fresh air, courtesy of Tracy Holmes, who was one of the panellists. And I've got to say, she didn't just shock me. She seemed to shock the host, the other panel members, the crowd. But she's 100% right here for calling out the absurdity of the Albanese government's push to censor Elon Musk's platform X about what goes on on X and whether we should be doing more regulating of the internet? What's your view? Um, I, I don't agree with any kind of um, censorship in a, in a general sense. Uh, I don't think Elon Musk is contributing to any um, social cohesion split inside this country. I think our media, our mainstream media, is doing enough of that. I think um, our politicians do enough of that. When you talk about people being able to have different perspectives and different points of views, and it's OK to have that, and yet we don't see that in politics ever. We don't see it in mainstream media. We, we see this absolute divide to the point where people are starting to think that when they read in the newspaper that it's unsafe for women to walk down the street in this country, mm. people start believing it. And that kind of fear is what is leading to social cohesion breakdown in this country. We have to stop the fear. And whoever's doing the fear-mongering mm. is what we've got to stop. I just want to take you to the women feeling safe, because a lot of women are expressing that, especially after mm. the mm. murder of... Uh, that woman in Ballarat who was mm. just going for a jog in mm. the morning. I mean, it's just unthinkable, and I know Ballarat's really suffered so immensely recently. That's where some of that comes from, doesn't it? It is, but it's not... You know, when we read reports that women are too afraid to walk down the street, I know lots of women that are not too afraid to walk down the street. I know there's a lot of men uh, who have our backs. Mm. You know, that is the society we live in. Bravo. I am uh, on board with all of that. What can I say? The ABC crowd would have got a shock, though, because, uh, uh, well, you know, Elon Musk is the devil and, and all men are evil and all women are terrified. And, and she counted all of that with, with logic and calmness. Good to see. Yeah, I'm not sure how she got through the uh, extensive screening process. Um, <laughs> Mark Speetman didn't look too comfortable, did he, either? She was <laughs> sort of, he was trying to get out of the shot. But, no, I didn't think I'd get such a, uh, as you say, a logical, well-put statement in favour of freedom of speech on the ABC. Everything she says is 100% right. Uh, the main propagators of division in our society are the mainstream media, quite often, the, the political class who seek to divide us. I mean, it wasn't Elon Musk that came up with the voice to parliament. Yeah. Right? The most divisive thing we've had for... That was Anthony Albanese. So... Um, Good on her, and I hope that she continues to have a voice in our debate. Well, uh, I, I will be watching on to see if she's back on the ABC anytime oh, soon. Hopefully breath, she yeah. will be. Uh, just before you go, let's go to the US with this lawfare we're seeing against Trump. Uh, it's designed to damage him. Now, obviously, they want to bankrupt him. They want to put him in jail. But really, they want to keep him off the campaign trail, keep him away from those crucial swing states. And this is what he had to say about the gag order and the trial being extended by another two to three weeks. Because they all want to keep me off the campaign trail. That's all this is about. This is about election interference. How do we stop it? And it's a disgrace. And then you have the other thing that maybe is even more disgraceful is the gag order, where I can't basically, I have to watch every word I tell you people. You ask me a question, a simple question, I'd like to give it, but I can't talk about it. Because this judge has given me a gag order and said you'll go to jail if you violate it. And frankly, you know what? Our Constitution is much more important than jail. It's not even close. Dan, what do you make of his claims of political interference? Well, it is political interference. Um, you know, if you have a look at the polling, the, the real clear politics average, it's got Trump winning at the moment by a bigger margin than in 2016. Now, who knows what will happen, but clearly um, the left are desperate to stop there being a proper debate because Trump is an effective campaigner and he cuts through. And uh, Biden can barely string a sentence together. Dan Wah, thank you so much. Thank you.